Hi, this is Jaden with CCTV Security Pros. Today I'll be unboxing and setting up one of our 32 channel SureVision systems. While I will only be showing off the 32 channel NVR in this video, the same general concept can be applied to the 64 channel and 128 channel NVRs as well. Here is our 32 channel NVR. You'll see here it comes with the owner's manual and accessory kit. The first thing you'll want to do is write your order number in the dedicated space on the front of the manual. This will help us identify your system if you ever need to call in for support. Keep this manual near your NVR at all times. Do not throw it away or discard it. You should also read the disclaimers on page 2. The only one I will point out here is disclaimer number 1. Always test cameras and cables prior to mounting. This is imperative to figuring out any potential problems as soon as possible. If you're making your own CAT5e or CAT6 cables, be sure to use one of the common standards, like T568B. Inside the accessory kit, you will also find the provided power cable and or adapter. You'll also see the mouse. Put these aside for now. Now I'll show you our power over ethernet or PoE switches. These are what we will plug our cameras into when the time comes. You'll see the switches will also come with their own power adapter. The last thing you'll need is a monitor. These are provided in our complete systems unless they are chosen to not be included. While the system can support many resolutions, even up to 4K, out of the box it will be set to 1920 by 1080 If you are using a monitor that doesn't support that resolution, this setting may need to be changed before it can be used on that monitor. We'll start the setup by plugging in the provided power cord and or adapter that came in your NVR's accessory kit. Do not use any other power cables for your NVR. Only use the one provided. Next, plug in an HDMI cable from your monitor to the NVR. If you plan on having the system on the internet to view your cameras from your phone or computer, plug in an ethernet cable from your router to the NVR in port 1. Now we'll attach the PoE switches. Connect an Ethernet cable to port 2 on the NVR. The other end of the cable will go into one of your switch's uplink ports. For our switches, these will be the two ports that are isolated on the side. I will be using port 18T on my switch here. When connecting any additional switches, you will want to chain each one off of the last. Here's how I have it configured for a 32-channel system. You can see we're using the uplink ports for every connection between the NVR and the switches. At this point, we can also plug the power cords into each of our switches. We'll hold off on plugging cameras in for now. It is highly recommended to get through the NVR setup first, and then plug any cameras into the switches. Let's also plug in the mouse into one of the USB ports on the NVR. On mine, I have one on the front, but for the 128 channel NVRs, they are only on the back. We can now power on the NVR. In my case, this is a switch on the back. Make sure your monitor is on as well. The SureVision logo will pop up on the screen while the system boots up. When the system is fully initialized, it will show you a login screen. The default password for the NVR and all of our SureVision cameras is 123456. Let's enter that in the password box here. Click Login. It will then ask you to create a strong password. After clicking OK, you'll see this screen here. We'll want to enter 123456 in the old password box. You'll then need to enter a new password in the password box and that same password one more time in the confirm box. The password must be at least 8 characters in length, have a number and a special character, such as an exclamation point or a dollar sign. You may click the eyelash button on the right to see what you are typing. Lastly, type the best email for the primary user in the email box. This email will be used to reset the password if it is ever forgotten. 
While we're on the topic of forgetting passwords, on page two of your ShareVision Owner's Manual, you should write down your username and password in the dedicated boxes. The username will always be admin, all lowercase letters. Let's click Apply. If you don't want to use a password every time you log into the NVR, you can draw a pattern instead. Click and hold the left mouse button on one of the nine circles to start drawing. Then, drag your mouse cursor to the other boxes to create a line. You must use at least four circles in your pattern. It will then ask you to draw the same pattern again to confirm. If you would prefer to use your password more, you may click Don't Show Again or Skip. Do note that if you create a pattern, there are still settings that require your password, so it's always best to have it on hand. Now we'll see the startup wizard. Click Next. Here you can select your time and date. You can also choose your time zone and time and date format. When it's configured to your liking, click Next. By default, Enable DHCP will be selected. For 99% of you, you'll want to keep this enabled. What we should do here, however, is click on NIC1 right below Multi Address and select NIC2. Then, we can disable DHCP for NIC2. After this is done, click Next. This is the IP camera section. If you have any IP cameras on the network, they will appear here and you can add them. If you're following along with the video and you don't have any cameras plugged in yet, we can skip this and click OK. Now that we've gotten past the initial setup of the NVR, we can start to plug in our cameras. If you're using our switches, you'll want to plug the cameras into the 16 camera ports on each switch. The cameras can take 1-2 to two minutes to fully power on. Let's switch back to looking at the monitor. If you right-click with the mouse, it will bring up the shortcut menu. This menu will let you switch how many cameras are on the screen, view recordings of your cameras, or go to the main menu, which we can do by left-clicking where it says Menu. It may ask you to enter your password or pattern here. This is the main menu which will host pretty much all of your settings in the categories on the left. By default, you should see the camera settings when entering the menu for the first time. Any cameras that are plugged into the switch and are fully powered on should be seen here. If you don't see any cameras, make sure the cables you are using are working, and that we're using the correct ports on the NVR and switches as shown earlier. To add your cameras, simply click on the green plus signs for each, or click Add All at the top. After doing so, we can right-click with the mouse to exit the menu, and you should see your cameras come online after a couple of seconds. You can double-click with the left mouse button on a camera to make it full screen. Double-click again or use the shortcut menu to see the rest of the cameras. The next thing you may want to look at are the recording settings. Let's go back into the menu. Click Storage on the left. This should bring you to the recording schedule. The decision you'll want to make here is whether you want normal or motion recording. Normal, or blue, will record video 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. This is the default setting on these cameras, so if that's what you want, you should be okay to continue to the next section. Motion, or green, will only record whenever the camera detects motion. If you would like your cameras to do this, click on the green rectangle next to the word Motion. With that selected, you may click and hold on the very top left box of the schedule and drag your mouse cursor to the bottom right. If you've done it right, the entire schedule should now be green. You can click Apply at the bottom. You can then either select another camera at the top to edit, or click Copy at the bottom and apply this schedule to the other cameras. Now I'll show you how to add the NVR to your cell phone or mobile device, so you can view the cameras on the go. Navigate to the menu, then click on Network, 
and P2P. Make sure the device status shows online or network connected. If it does not show this, double check that DHCP is enabled in the network settings and that the cable you are using to connect the NVR to the network is functional. Once the NVR is showing that it's online, leave this screen up for later and we'll switch to the phone. If you're setting the system up for someone else, make sure you do these next steps on the primary user's device. You'll want to install the SureVision app in the App Store or Google Play Store. Open the app once it's done installing. It will have you agree to the service agreement and then show you a page like this. Tap Sign Up towards the bottom left. It will have you select a region first. United States should show up as the recommended region at the top. Then, enter the best email address for the primary user. Agree to the service agreement below once again and tap Verify. You'll then receive an email with a verification code to the address listed. Type that into the box and you'll then create a password. Once done with that, you should see a screen like this. Tap the three lines at the top left and select Devices. Tap the Add button at the top and choose Scan. Now you can scan the QR code on your monitor. After that, it will let you name the device whatever you prefer, and you can tap the Save icon at the top right. Now that the device is saved to your phone, we can tap the three lines again and choose Live View. Tap on one of the plus signs in the gray boxes and add your cameras one by one. You can put them in any order you prefer, and you can have a total of 16 on your phone screen at once. Simply scroll to the left to add any more cameras. To share your device with another user, you can either have them sign in with the same account you made earlier, or use the share function by tapping on the NVR in the devices page. The last things we're going to go over is how to view your playback and how to back up that footage to a USB flash drive. Let's right click on a camera and select playback. You can choose the cameras you want to view at the top left and select the day you wish to see. At the bottom is the timeline for that day, which uses 24 hour time. You can scroll up on the mouse over the timeline to zoom in. You'll see blue if it's general recording and red if there was motion during that time. As you can see, there's not much yet since we just set up the system. If you want to back up your footage, you'll need to plug in a flash drive into one of the USB ports on your system. Once done, click the scissors at the bottom of the screen and two red markers will show on the timeline. You can move these to your start and end times before clicking the scissors again. This will save that clip to the NVR. You can find your recordings in the File Management folder. Select the clips you want and click Backup. It will show you the contents of the flash drive and let you back up your clips. You can also format the flash drive or create a new folder. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a like and consider subscribing to catch any guides in the future. Thanks for watching.